my Gavanin folks. Today we have yet another fascinating integral, and this one's kind of strange. Strange because we're integrating from 0 to infinity the Lambert W function evaluated at 1 over x to the n dx, where n is supposed to be greater than 1. I haven't invoked the Lambert W function quite a lot on the channel, so this is going to be interesting. Okay, cool. We'll begin with the argument of the Lambert W function, that is the 1 over x to the n, and I'd like to transform this by letting x to the minus n equal u, which implies on differentiating that, rather, first, before differentiating, I might as well write this out so I don't mess it up, so x here equals u to the negative 1 over n, and now dx equals negative 1 over n, times u to the negative 1 over n minus 1 du. Now, what about the limits of integration? Well, as x approaches 0, n being greater than, greater than 1 means that u should approach infinity. And as x approaches infinity, we have u approaching 0. So the limits are effectively switched. So i is now defined as the integral from infinity to 0 of w of u, and the differential element transforms into this negative 1 over n outside. We have u to the minus 1 plus 1 over n du. And of course we can get rid of the negative sign if we just flip up, flip the limits of integration. Switch up, flip up, I got those two mixed up. I don't think flip up is ever a term. It's flip the limits or switch up the limits. I'm overthinking this already. Anyway, so we have 1 over n times the integral from 0 to infinity of w of u times u to the negative 1 plus 1 over n du. And now we could use yet another transformation. And this time we're going to be more direct. So we're going to take lambert w of u and set it equal to t. Now this would imply that u equals w inverse of t, and the inverse of this function is of course t times e to the t. Okay, cool, that's interesting. And differentiating yields du equal to, well, we have e to the t dt plus t times e to the t dt. We can factor out the e to the t as well as the e dt. And we have this 1 plus t term left over. And as far as the limits are concerned, if you want u to approach infinity, this implies that t should approach infinity. And for u to approach 0, of course, t approaching 0 will do the trick. So the good news is that the limits of integration are clearly not bothered. But let me just zoom out a bit so you guys can have a clear view of how our transformation affects the integral. So all of this implies that the target integral i equals 1 over n times the integral from 0 to infinity again. w of u is now t, and we have u, u being t times e to the t, and this thing is raised to negative 1 plus 1 over n, and the differential element is e to the t, times 1 plus t dt. Now I'm going to expand some of these terms here, specifically this one under the exponential, so that we have 1 over n integral 0 to infinity, t times t to the minus 1 times t to the negative 1 over n, e to the negative t and e to the negative t over n, and of course we still have e to the t, and we have 1 plus t here. So we do see some lovely cancellation taking place. And this implies that i here equals 1 over n. Can't forget that. But I probably will and, you know, make an edit later or a note correcting this. You guys know the drill. So 1 over n times the integral from 0 to infinity of what exactly do we have surviving? Oh yeah, we have t to the negative 1 over n, and we have this 1 plus t be multiplied, e to the minus t over n dt, and things are looking good so far. I, I mean, I like the look of everything. And now for another 
useful transformation. I would like this argument of the exponential function to look a bit more clean. That is, I would like t over n set equal to z, implying that dt equals n times dz. Again, we have absolutely no change happening to the limits of integration. So we have 1 over n integral 0 to infinity. Now what exactly is t? That is z to the negative 1 over n times n to the negative 1 over n. Then we have 1 plus z times n, and we have e to the minus z, and we have n times dz. So I'm just going to cancel these two out. And then we have n to the negative 1 over n, integral 0 to infinity, z to the minus 1 over n times 1 plus z to the n. And I might as well just expand this out using multiplication. So I have z to the 1 minus 1 over n times n, all times e to the minus z dz, and we might as well now invoke the linearity of the integration operator and write this as n to the negative 1 over n times the integral from 0 to infinity, terribly sorry about that, and we have z to the minus 1 over n e to the minus z dz, then we have a plus sign n to the minus 1 over n times n is just n to the 1 minus 1 over n, which looks pretty dope, integral 0 to infinity, and we have e to the minus z, z to the 1 minus 1 over n, dz. And long-time viewers of the channel know exactly what's going to happen next. We invoke our friend the gamma function. So gamma of t would be integral 0 to infinity, or it looks cooler to use z for complex numbers. So gamma of z is t to the z minus 1, e to the minus t, dt. So we do have a couple of gamma function integrals over here. So i here equals n to the minus 1 over n. And this thing should be the gamma function evaluated at negative 1 by n plus 1. So that's 1 minus 1 over n. Then we have n to the 1 minus 1 over n. Gamma 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. So that's gamma 2 minus, terribly sorry about that, 1 over n. Okay, cool. And now for the recursive, for or the recursion formula for the gamma function, gamma z plus 1, of course, equals z times gamma z. And we do have gamma 2 minus 1 over n, which can be expanded as 1 minus 1 over n times gamma 1 minus 1 over n, so we can factor that thing out. And this implies that i here is just gamma 1 minus 1 over n. Factored out, we're left with n to the negative 1 over n plus n to the 1 minus n times 1 minus 1 over n, which is just n to the minus 1. Okay, it looks, it looks like we could have some more cancellations here. So we have gamma 1 minus 1 over n, n to the negative 1 over n, plus n to the 1 minus 1 over n, minus n to the 1 minus 1 is 0. So we're just left with n to the negative 1 over n, some lovely cancellation that I was talking about. And this all implies that the integral from 0 to infinity of the Lambert W function at 1 over x to the n dx converges to n minus 1 over, no wait, it's n to the 1 minus 1 over n gamma 1 minus n, which looks insanely cool. And of course, we do have a very nice closed form for the case of n equal to 2. So for n equals 2, we have integral 0 to infinity Lambert W of 1 over x squared dx equal to 2 to the 1 minus 1 half, which is, of course, 1 half. And we have gamma 1 half, which is famously equal to root pi. So all of this implies that the integral from 0 to infinity of Lambert W x to the minus 2 terribly. Sorry about that. You know what? 1 over x squared 
Uh, it still looks pretty cool. dx equals root 2 pi, which is absolutely beautiful. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.